Now that you've been using Google Apps for a while, you'd probably like a better way to organize your files and share documents with students. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can use G-Class folders and Doctopus scripts to make that happen. G-Class folders uses your Google Drive and sets up four folders for each class that you have. A view-only folder shared with every student in your class. That's ideal for handing out templates, notes to parents, things that you don't want students to edit. An editable folder in which every student in your class is able to edit any document that's in there. That's great for collaborative work where you'd like every student to be able to work on the same document. A teacher folder just for you. And G-Class folders also sets up a folder for each student in your class. You're the owner, but the student has editing rights. Anything that the student creates in that folder is automatically shared with you. Likewise, you can use Doctopus to photocopy templates that you would like to provide for each student in your class. You remain the owner of the document and the student is an editor. You can also use this tool to customize the name of your documents so that they're easier to find. Together, they'll help you organize your drive and clear, clean up your shared with me folder. To get a better understanding of what these tools do, I highly recommend checking out these resources. Our learning targets for this tutorial are to use G-Class folders to set up organized folders for your class, and to use Doctopus to share a document template with each student in your class. You should have a good understanding of how to create documents and spreadsheets in Google Apps before we begin, and you should also understand the different levels of edit sharing and editing access within Google Apps. We're going to be using scripts, but you won't need to know anything about programming. Here's what you'll need to begin. A spreadsheet with your class list, including their Google Apps username, their first name and last name, as well as a document template that you want to share with your class. Thanks to the following individuals for developing the scripts, as well as the DLRTs at the YRDSB. Let's get started. To begin, go to your Drive homepage. You'll want to create a spreadsheet. Once your spreadsheet is set up, go to the Tools menu and choose Script Gallery. Search for G Class Folders, all one word, in the gallery and install it. Look for the most recent version if you see more than one you'll get a prompt requiring you to authorize a script. Go ahead and click continue. The app is requesting that you allow it to interact with your identity on Google Apps. Scroll down to the bottom of the list and click accept. Now you can close the script gallery. You'll notice a new G Class Folders menu. Go click on it and click on Initial Settings. We'll leave the default settings on this initial page just to keep it simple. Go ahead and click Save. G Class Folders has set up the headers on your spreadsheet. Now you'll need to use your class list. I've got mine open in another tab. I'll select all of the students in my class and copy them. Then go back to my G Class Folder spreadsheet. I'll paste in my student names and email addresses. The email addresses that you use need to be their Google Apps email addresses. I also need to put in my own address as a teacher email. I need to put in a class name. The recommended way to use G-Class folders is to have a folder for each class. For example, one for math, one for science, one for language, etc. Now that I've got this basic information in, I can run the G-Class folder script again. 
click on the menu and then click on create new folders and shares. The script will run in the background. When it finishes it will tell you that the class folders have been created. Click OK and then go to the G class roster tab. Here you will see your class list along with links to the folders that have been created. If you were to look in your drive you would see a new folder called language. In the folder you'll see the language folder that can be edited by any student in the class, the language folder which any student in the class has view only access to, your unshared teacher folder where you can keep documents related to the class, and the assignment folders. In the assignment folders we'll find a folder created for each student in the class. In this example Eugene would have editing access to the folder. Anything that he creates in this folder will be shared between him and I. That's it for G-Class folders. Now we're going to move on to Doctopus. I'm going to move back to my spreadsheet. Now I want to return to my G-Class folder menu and get a G-Class Hub URL. This is what lets me install Doctopus to run with this class. When the dialog box pops up, click on the custom link. The one we'll focus on for this tutorial is Doctopus. You need to select the class that you would like to use with G-Class folders. Go ahead and click on Language. Then click on Launch to start Doctopus. When the dialog box pops up, the title of the new spreadsheet will have the name of the class. You may want to rename it to reflect the assignment that you're giving them. Then click on Create New Doctopus. The spreadsheet will be created and you can go to the Opinion Organizer. This spreadsheet already has your student names and it's tied to their student folders. You'll notice a new Doctopus menu at the top of the spreadsheet. At this point it's a good idea to make sure that your document template is somewhere where you can find it. Here's a template that I'm going to work with. I'm going to drop it into that teacher folder in my language class by using the file menu and choosing move to folder. Find language and drop it into the teacher folder. I've returned to my opinion organizer spreadsheet. Now I'm going to click on the Doctopus menu and launch the installation. It'll ask for authorization and I'm going to give it. Again, it needs this authorization so that the script can run. Now I can go back to the Doctopus menu and choose Launch Installation again. In this instance, we'll go with a basic setup. For this example, my sharing type will be individual all the same. Once I've done that, I have some additional options. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple with none of the rest of the class being allowed to edit, comment, or view. But the students that I share the document with will be allowed to edit their own individual documents. They won't be able to change the sharing permissions to add additional authors. If I wanted to, I could add an additional teacher or EA to these documents. I'll leave everything else with the default settings and click Save Settings. Now it's going to ask me for the folder that has my document template. It's in the language teacher folder. I can
can select my template file, which is the Opinion Organizer template. Now I'll click Save Settings. Now I'm going to choose a destination folder. I'll go with Opinion Organizer Demo. To name the document, I can choose the student's first name from the list of variables and copy and paste it in. I can also add the title of the assignment. I may also want to put the date to make it easy for me to find. Once I've clicked on create my folder, I can save settings and the script will continue running. It offers me a chance to review and then click run copy and share. In the background, you'll notice that new columns have been added to my sheet and Doctopus is setting up the new documents and shares. Although this seems like a rather labor-intensive process on the back end, it'll save you a lot of time and frustration finding your documents when you start working with students. The app tells me it's complete and I click OK. What's nice about this tool is that I can see when the document was last edited and I've got a link to each student's document. Now let's see the product of the Doctopus script. I'll go back to my language folder and look in the assignment folders. Let's check Bradley's. Here's his opinion organizer. We open it up and we see that he can edit it. If we check the sharing permissions, we'll see that I'm the owner as the teacher and that he has editing privileges. That's it for Doctopus and G Class folders. I hope you find the tutorial helpful. Feel free to contact me or one of the other DLRTs if you need some help getting this running in your class. Thanks and good luck.